Hello, everybody. Today's podcast is brought to you by Fortress Alert Logic because it offers the most comprehensive managed detection and response coverage for public cloud, software as a service, on premises, and hybrid environments. To learn more, visit alertlogic.com. Links in all the description. And today's podcast is a little bit different because, as you will see here, we've got a trifecta of Stephen Rose. I don't know why I said trifecta, but I guess there's a trifecta of us <laughs> here on the podcast. So Stephen Rose, a face you probably have heard, probably seen, and probably are familiar with now. He's at Microsoft for more than a decade, 15 years. Is that right, Stephen? That is correct. I was and, at Microsoft for 15 years. And he's joining us today on the podcast as sort of like a build. As, I don't want to say it's a gone, very but special it episode. Cub One of those sun, back to school special episodes. Right. Yeah. Everybody likes a special episode. So, yes. Mr. Rose, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm excited to announce that uh, I have joined the Petri team. I have a new show that uh, will be coming out very soon called Unplug IT, where we will take, uh, unlike the stuff that you guys are doing, which is very news and what's going on and all that, it's going to be one topic for 30 minutes where we'll dig into uh, like episode one is going to be teams, the new teams, and we're going to really dig into the new teams, understand what it means to IT pros, how you're going to deploy it, manage it, some secure stuff, and even more firmer dates on when we're going to start to see some of the parity and things, some of the new features coming out. So, are there um, firm dates at Microsoft now? Is that a thing? There, there are squishy dates, <laughs> is what we have. We were able to get yeah. from sometime this year to, you know what, we'll see it around, you know, this will happen before Ignite, this will happen after Ignite. And right. yeah, we actually talked about a few more of the features that are going to be coming, uh, but that will have on parity by, by this summer, uh, which is great. So I'm excited for that. So, yeah, feature parity. So you were at Microsoft for 15 years, as you said. You've attended Build many, many times. What do you think? Um, actually, this is my first time attending Build. What? I, I never <laughs> did Build. I did really? Ignite. Yeah. I did everything in the world but Build. And I thought, you know oh, what? Boy. It would be great as an IT pro-focused person to go to Build and really go, what's important for this audience? So, look, I even got a T-shirt when I yeah, was there. Nice. The whole thing. Um, you know, I... I got up early because I was listening to Panos's keynote that just finished about 15, 20 <laughs> minutes ago. So it was great. Um, yep. <laughs> no, it, 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 it was very interesting. I mean, I, I ran into a lot of folks that I know and a lot of developer folks, but I think from an IT pro standpoint, there's definitely interesting things to take away on how this is going to affect users and IT and companies and what you want to start thinking about from a deployment, a management, a security standpoint as we went through it so um i really i really enjoyed it from that standpoint but it was definitely different nice. and i know this and it has been in years past me a hybrid conference so yeah yeah they didn't invite the press which was unfortunate i'd probably be there with you otherwise i know yeah i did see i did see mr campbell we got to hang out mm -hmm. i had a chance to interview him and we had a great talk on ai which we'll put up on the show and do some great. stuff with so yeah nice so let's kick it off with, I don't know, where do we want to start? Windows? I mean, that was, Panos was there. You've already mentioned Windows a bit. There was AI, there was Fabric, there was... Yeah, I think I, I think the conference as a whole was interesting. And I think it's great to maybe start with Sacha's keynote on day one and how that set things up. Because I think this was probably one of the most important keynotes that he's ever done. This is when he is going to officially sell everybody on AI and having to do it. Because the bottom line is... This stuff is costing Microsoft a fortune. Yeah, this is what they used mm -hmm. to call a bet the company moment, right? Right. Yeah, this is exactly it. And yeah. the fact that he talks about, you know, the pursuit of the dream machine and the history of computing and, you know, calls out Steve Jobs and the iPhone and what that is and compares chat GPT to the iPhone, to the World Wide Web, to the PC, to all of that. Absolutely. Yeah. This is a... Hey, we believe everything has changed and that if you're not on board, as every time one of these new devices or services or ideas came out, GDP growth went up. It basically helps the planet. It creates more jobs. So if that's what you're afraid of, more jobs are going to be created. Yeah. Maybe different jobs, right? But yes, Different probably. jobs, yeah. 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 But I think, you know... One of the things then that really excited me that even in kind of taking a look at what was going to be covered was the concept of plugins with open AI. And I'm like, 
the light bulb went on when I saw that because OpenAI, I think it's great in some cases. In other cases, it's going to take a lot of learning. But the idea of bringing in Adobe and Jira and Spotify and, mm -hmm. you know, Bitbucket and Thomson Reuter and Trello and all these things, I'm like, ah, that's what I always felt was missing was it was so siloed and you were either using chat GPT in the wild, which couldn't connect with all your information or could connect. But what if you could bring in some of these outside sources where your data is being stored in the cloud or information is being stored in the cloud that can then interact with your data in a secure manner. That's the key part in a secure manner and then derive what that means when you bring that all together. Do you, so uh, the first thing I thought of when I saw this was this is like Chromium, you know, it, rather than doing your own thing and have your own special form of extension. Now, all of these things work across these different products, right? It was a way right. to kind of buy into an ecosystem that already exists. And okay, that's fine. It's a simple example. But do you see a world, they, they kind of call this like a standard almost. I mean, does Google adopt this standard? Does Google buy into this as well? And then you can go across AIs and, and pick your pick your platform or whatever. I mean, or do you think they just go there? You know, in other words, is Adobe going to have to go and integrate with whatever Google does separately? And if presumably yeah. Amazon, et cetera? I think in the beginning they're going to have to because they Google has Baird and, you know, Microsoft has this. Adobe has their own AI. They showed off the new yeah. Photoshop stuff yesterday. And that's I was chatting with those folks. I'm going to have mm -hmm. them on the show, but that's their own AI. So I think it's Firefly, I think, is that the name of it? Yeah. Well, Firefly is the new app that they've done, but they oh, have their own okay. a, yep. yeah, they have their own AI tool, which is going to power Firefly and the new Photoshop to mm -hmm. do some pretty amazing things. As I was saying, so I think in the beginning, you're going to get the AI wars, you know, <laughs> that's yep. what happens right before Skynet, but yeah, you're going to have the AI wars. They're all going to fight it out. <laughs> Who's got the better one. Sure. Who's got more muscle. Because now Google's going to say, you know what, we can get tons of money from these folks to build these plugins. And even if we, you know, if we build up Bear, that's a huge source of dollars for us that we can use. And if they're really smart, they'll say, you know what, we'll take OpenAI, let Microsoft pay for it and, and do that too. But they're not yeah. at that point yet. I think okay. what's really interesting is this puts Apple in a really interesting position because they yeah. don't have any of this. They're going to talk about hollow glasses. You know, and know, less than two weeks now. Yeah. And um, this is not going to be part of it. And are they going to really start looking way behind? Cause they're now a year behind saying we're going to make Siri finally intelligent. They're nowhere near that point. So I think that's, what's going to be interesting too, is what Apple's going to do. Right. Hmm. Okay. Um, looking at the yeah, and looking at the browser plugins directly in the browser the same way that we use it, you know, I'm excited to have Zillow and Open Table that I can now use inside of all my Teams <laughs> chats. I think that's gonna and Instacart. <laughs> so now I can think about on company time, think about buying a house, make a dinner reservation, and actually yep. have the slide here, and then order some food and, uh, for and when and I get hungry this, after dinner. Um, yeah, you were on Teams, you can also play a game if you want. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> While so. in my avatar yeah. self. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you know what? This is this is when P Microsoft talks about platforms, or people like me will say things like, you know, Microsoft makes platforms. That's what they are, right? Yeah. Teams is a platform. It is, and it, and it's not just, uh, it's not just. Well, it is apps, but it's like apps running inside of Teams. Yes. You know, this notion we're going to collaborate on an app. It's going to be hosted inside of Teams. Yeah, and we're all uh, you know operating uh, together inside of it at the same time. I mean. Uh, at some point, can I replace, you know, progman.exe with teams.exe? Is that how this works? I mean, at some point, this becomes the platform, right, the, the operating system. Well, absolutely. And I think what we're seeing and what's being interesting is the third-party apps are getting integrated. I mean, you've got Adobe where you can now sign your lease right there inside of a Teams yeah. meeting and everything is being tracked. It's in a formal court of law holds up that you sign that document and all that information is there. Atlassian has brought Confluence and Cloud into Teams Workday, not as a plugin, but as actually within the workflows. And they showed off Atlassian with the AI workflow because it's already an integrated app. And that was the big thing when I was at Microsoft was getting companies to move from a plugin because then there's where's the data stored, is it secure and all that to an integrated app where you don't have to leave the Chrome. And that's really Microsoft's thing is we have two Chromes. We have Teams and we have M365 browser. We don't want you to leave those and we want to integrate those as much as possible. And that really leads right. into Fabric 
as one of those tools to do it. Now, let me ask you, what were your thoughts on Fabric? Well, my first thought was we've used this name before, but it was for something else. Yes. <laughs> You're right. I, I think one, one of the issues I have with Build in recent years, and this has been true since uh, I was probably 2012-ish, the focus shifted from Windows on day one to cloud. You know, it was right. somewhere around that time frame. Is uh, Microsoft, I think this is a byproduct of their platform's nature. They have this uh, incredible habit on the enterprise side of just uh, creating new brands <laughs> for everything. Mm -hmm. And and new names and new things, you know. Um, and I feel like fabric kind of falls under that. Uh, it's I I don't know why we need a name for this. This should just be foundational to the product in a way, if that makes sense. Right. Um, but I also think that this is the most Microsoft thing <laughs> imaginable, right? It's yeah. it is Microsoft's approach to solving a problem. Yes, I agree. I I actually had a chance to play with fabric when it was mm -hmm. still called Genesis internally, oh and the Genesis idea was with a Y like Terminator. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, and there was a site with an umlaut, though, to make it nice. cool okay. over the top. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but what it was was, and this is the key thing is, hey, what if we could take email and everything you're storing in the cloud, your email, your OneDrive, all the Teams data, all of that, and let it communicate and talk with each other and become sort of part of a single unified search and governance experience? Because this is the problem with AI. I mean, I was reading some stats. 70% of people are playing with ChatGPT. 40% of them are putting confidential information into ChatGPT, right. right. but only 5% will tell their boss they're using it. That's a problem. Well, okay, so we should just we should quickly just highlight the fact. So I think one of the things that Microsoft is off. No, I one of the things that Microsoft is offering is mm -hmm. this notion of I would almost call it like internal AI yes. or. Um, Microsoft Graph governance slash permissions slash identity based AI, whatever however you want to call it, right. whatever you want to call it, and that's what that's what we're describing here, right? The the notion yes. here is that this is not unsafe out in the world. I'm not making a pretty pink unicorn flying in space. I'm trying to do something for work, and it's important that uh, just as we have an Azure Active Directory or whatever other product, right. we have this notion of identity and permission, and you know who gets to work with this data, who gets to see it when it's published. Et cetera, et cetera. So this is like the baseline. Like to, you know, this is Microsoft's. This is where Microsoft's strengths in the enterprise over the past 20, yes. 25 years have come to play in the AI world. Right. And you have right. to do this because I'm working with a company right now that says we want to use ChatGPT. So we built our own interface that would go through DLP, that would take a look for words and all that. Because the problem is a learning language model, the LLM, it has to learn. And it learns from what you tell it. And the problem that we're getting is the even the even though it doesn't store all the answers, it stores the questions. And if you start asking very specific questions and start using terms and code words or things like that, it's still in there. And it is possible through typing in different things that you're some of that's going to come up. And we've seen companies like Amazon and other ones who have said, hi, it obviously knows a little bit about this because I've asked it some questions. So it's kind of interesting on how that comes in. But I did ask ChatGPT, I'm like, hi, what is the daily cost of average of, of <laughs> you know, of mm -hmm. Azure usage for ChatGPT? Mm -hmm. And it goes, my information doesn't go back before that. It gives yeah, me this no, it long says, answer no on how I can't tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no hobbling glaze, you know? sorry, sir, not my table. So, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, that was the big one, though, for day the rest of day one, and that opens up a lot of things on, ah, that's how I can do this securely and access all the company information and, and do that. So that was a good wrapper, and I think Fabric is something, no matter what you're going to call it, I thought they'd call it Microsoft Groove, because it's just groovy, nice. and we can have our third... <laughs> Our yep. third yep. Groove so product. You know, we got Microsoft. it right this time. <laughs> right, yes, exactly, yep. um, in doing that. So that that was day one. Day two is Panos. Mm -hmm. Um you know, what can 30,000 people tell us about work? So he basically took Jared Spataro's normal sure. spotlight and took it on for himself because you're right. Um, almost all of Panos' stuff was announced on day one. I'm like, wow, well, seems like something to be on day two. I, I just, it's a weird thing for me to say because I can be very critical of this person, but um, I felt like they threw him under the bus. Yeah. I'm sure Sophia came up to him that night because he mentions her in every keynote and gave him a big hug and said, and said, "We're sorry." Uh... Yeah, here, Daddy. They, <laughs> they, they, Daddy. They took your light. Um, you know, it's... yeah. 
But but the work trend index, which I do think is great because it is really a lot, you know, workers are spending two days every week collecting and processing information. 64% can't keep up with work due to the lack of time to innovate. This is something I've said is that AI is not going to, in most cases, replace jobs. It's really going to allow people to focus in on what's important. Um, yeah, one out of two people worry about losing their job, but 70% still want to use the AI. I don't care if I burn myself. I'm going to use this because it's going to open up all this other stuff. A and it really will. It's those, hey, I got to get ready for those meetings. Can you condense all of this information about this together? Or, you know, what did I miss? I'm looking forward to, you know, when I take a vacation to say, hey, condense these meetings into and what the action items are into a single document so I can get ready for the week and spend yes. two days. I, yes, I, uh, there's some UI that I, I, I don't 100% agree with, uh, you know, sidebars in the case of Copilot or this, um, uh, what was it called? The um, developer home, I think, yeah, Dev yeah. Home uh, app, Dev home. where it's like, okay, I, I, I understand what you're trying to do here. I don't, I'm not sure this is the UI, but then again, like you just, you know, uh, the example you just used was, you know, you can drag a document or a PDF file or whatever onto this thing. And it, you know, yeah. if you want a summary, yes. That's incredibly useful. It is um, incredibly useful, and um, yeah, this is the, it's just a minor thing, but uh, it's a time saver. It, it's an example of how AI is gonna, AI is going to make your work life more efficient. You know, yeah, uh, not sure is. about the UI, like I said, but. But it's a step, you know, it's a, at least it's the, the UI is going to have to change and we're going to see this become a more predominant part of what we're doing and what we're looking at as mm -hmm. we bring this together. But I think this is the start, but I think it's going to be more integrated. I think certain things are going to disappear. I was chatting with the widgets folks. Mm -hmm. They're a sad group of folks. I love, you know, <laughs> I, I went to the widgets <laughs> folks and I'm, like, and I'm like, why is it when I click on widgets on the left, I pretty much get USA Today on my left hand side? Yeah. That's not what I want. I'm like, I want a dashboard. You'd be lucky if it was USA Today. It's oh, yeah. Exactly. Way crappier than that. No. And I'm like, I don't want any of that. I want to be able to see one calendar that has everything and I can mm -hmm. click and go right to my meetings. And then I well, want separate calendars because I, I have six this, different Brad, ones. I don't know if you caught this because this was underplayed, but they're actually going to let you get rid of. Mm -hmm. The feed, which to me is the problem Thank God. with widgets. Right. Make widgets. I, I, I've, there's, there's a goofy thing like iPhone users will put icons in their home screen just to bring the icons they really need down to the bottom of the screen right. instead of Apple just doing the right thing for them. In the same way, people will just fill up widgets with the widgets board with some widgets so they don't have to see the news. They try, you know, they right. push it below the fold or whatever. Just give us the chance to turn that off. And, and they are going to do said. that. They're going to yeah, finally. I, they, they said they're working on that. And the whole goal, and I said, really, what I want is a dashboard. This is what's important to yes. me. What are my meetings? How do I join them? Give me the different time zones for what's well, but, going on. Let me see my text messages from Teams. Let me see my text messages from my phone. So, the, but you that see, sort of stuff. now I wonder to myself, okay, we got this uh, pane over on the left that comes up. Turn, turn it into talking. Windows 7 phone is what I want. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, and but we have the second pane we're going to add over on the right for Copilot. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe combine those. Maybe, or something. Yeah. maybe this should be something. I, you know, like I said, I'm not sure about the UI. But yeah. I, uh, but at least we're seeing steps in the right direction. Yeah, and there's you're now going to be able to add widgets, real ones that you actually want to add. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, for Spotify, don't give me some playlists. Let me pin and create my work yeah. playlists. I like right. classical or things like that. And we had a long chat, and they're like, this is our goal. Mm -hmm. We thoroughly agree. They were taking notes fervently. And I'm like, look, I'm not just one of these guys like, look at me rant. I'm like, no, that's me. Work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's in fact, that was an incredibly accurate sound. I. <laughs> well, it goes back to our Bunsen honeydew and thinker. Yeah. So it works well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm like, look, you know, I would love to just, I said, on Android, you have it. In iOS, you have it. Why can't we have it here? Why can't I just see this is what's important to me and what I need to know to be prepared for my day and my next meeting and what's happening? And am I flying level and right and what's key? That's what I really want to see. And I have a feeling that's what a lot of people want to see. So we, yeah, we had a no, great chat that. and they're like, we love that. We yeah. That's a direction. We're not moving as fast. They, they're like, what are, what are the top five apps you want to see? I'm like, I have five calendars. I want to see one that has all of them and yeah. then each one separately. Because right I now I can only get my you. personal. You're never going to believe what this celebrity wore to this event. Yeah. <laughs> what it, What is happening here? Right. I don't even know who that person is. I, I have no clue who that person. After Little Nas X, I don't know many folks. That's oh, it. Geez. I know him. 
that's great but beyond that yeah i kind of lose it so uh and the numbers you know 100 million daily users on bing is great to see those numbers really start to shoot up billion I windows you, I, I know you talked to richard campbell recently but this was yeah. something he said months ago where he said uh you know microsoft saw chat gpt getting 100 million per month and said what the heck is this we've never experienced this kind of growth no. in bing ever and that that was you know maybe the impetus behind uh what their you know their announcements etc cetera, etc cetera. and there yeah. it is there's the exact number that's the number yeah yeah right? yeah because i think they were only at like 16 or 20 million users something like that i i don't know i'd have to take yeah. a look at that one but they finally hit their you know billion windows users which they thought they'd do in three years and it took them a little bit longer sure. um 300 million monthly teams users which we've seen and they've now gone from 1200 to 1400 to 1900 apps in the team store so that's um, incredible they're probably and that's more in the team good store. apps yeah. in the team store than there are in the microsoft store that is absolutely correct, yeah. yeah. Um, and there's becoming more integrated apps, and I think that's really the key thing. And then, um, you know, then it was Copilot. It, it was really digging into that. I like the idea. The examples they gave in Teams I thought was great because they had summarized key points, and unless you grab the screenshot, it's hard to see. Catch up on emails, summarize emails, draft an outline, create a status, create an email, something. What are the goals? what was mentioned and who is blank person. I'm like, those are pretty solid yeah. things that I would use and would use on a regular basis. And it's also um, kind of um, uh, similar and in, in, in the same ballpark as previous Teams features, this notion of um, we're going into a meeting and I want to know who I'm meeting with, you know, like yeah. what, what is it that I need to know about this person? You know, um, this is all really smart stuff. So, yes, yeah, seeing chat gpt not only in plugins but also seeing it as a team's message messaging extension so that we could leverage that inside of there and power platform connectors i think all of that you know makes good sense and then the final thing that was the big announcement and this was actually nice is that we'll see copilot in windows right. on june 11th if you're an insider they didn't say what level of insider but that's actually some you know real stuff that we'll be able to use and play with and and start to see this and really jack up microsoft's bill which is probably why they didn't do any raises or anything is they need to get ready to pay for all this so yeah i uh we talked a little bit about ui and i have this belief that well no they said this explicitly like this ui is kind of a step to the future where ai is just right. more firmly integrated but you know cortana didn't pro well i probably almost certainly because it's gone didn't really get a lot of uh use on windows desktop i feel no. like this ui at the very least is better and, and the functionality oh, yeah. is better and more akin to what people sitting in front of a computer would need of this assistant. Yes, this is the it. first step. This is really their Siri for Windows, but yeah. smarter. Um, right. But I think the goal is, and this is what's important, is how do we tie all of your experiences that you have both in Windows and in virtual Windows and, you know, AVD and M365 and all the rest and everything you're doing in Office and tie that all together so that you, there was a great, remember the courier video from a bunch of years mm -hmm. ago where they had the yep. little PDA and it's like, what's my next meeting? And it would do all that. They're sure. finally getting to that point of having a true AI assistant, a smart, intelligent assistant. Great, yeah. when's my next meeting? All right, good. Let's invite the folks to that I'm having this meeting with to a dinner. What places are close that I can get reservations at? All right, we can do it here. Great. Get, make reservations for seven. Send an invite to everybody. Now summarize the PowerPoint and all of our emails into this and now create a deck out of it. It's all stuff that we can do, but it's time consuming. And that's what I really think the thing of AI, AI is not going to make us smarter. It's not going to have somebody who does not know how to do their job suddenly help them to do their job. <laughs> and it's going to put, it's yeah, not going to put, a, yeah. Well, it was just prevent us from wasting time on things that aren't central to what we do for a living, right? Right. You know, I don't, I shouldn't have to learn Excel because I have to do this one thing once, right. you know, or yeah. whatever it is. I'm not good at, for some reason, I have to give a presentation. That's not my job. Why would I spend weeks struggling with this? Yeah. With the presentation or the uh, the literal presentation of the information, you know. Right. Uh, Give me the base and let me then make it my own and kind of yeah. add in the things that I want to. But it's sort of like saying, go buy all the groceries that I need to bake the cake, turn on the oven, get out all the stuff I need so I can just mix it and put it together. And I'll still screw that up, but at <laughs> least sure. there's less stuff that I'm doing. Like I'm not right. going to substitute baking powder for baking soda or if it's the other way around. I don't know. <laughs> I, look, I'm the yeah. guy who went to the store looking for 
cupcakes mix and went to three different stores and asked, why are you all out of cupcake mix? And they said, sir, cake mix is cupcake mix. It's just cake in a cup. I was 22. Nice. I didn't know, and I'd never bought I, it before in my life. I will embarrassingly admit that I learned what con hair conditioner was about two weeks ago for the first time in my 56-year-old life. Um, <laughs> so despite the fact it, that it's been... What, what, what did you think its purpose I was? I literally came out with it, and I said, what, it, does this do anything? <laughs> what, what is this? <laughs> so like, like anti-shampoo? It's been in here my whole life. I don't understand right. it. Shampoo, anti-shampoo. All I it know is I'm opposite. half blind, and sometimes I put the this in my hair by mistake, and it doesn't do the same thing, and I don't get it. <laughs> Do you but leave the, it in your hair? Do you, you know, right. it but, but the dog likes to sniff my head more when I use it. So <laughs> yeah. you know that. It's <laughs> sure. perhaps to attract dogs. Yeah, it's those simple things, but it's that simple stuff that gets all of that. But you still have to be intelligent enough to know how to bring it together and how to pull it together. And that's right. what's critical. Right. No, I, I, that's where the branding comes in. It makes so much sense. You know, Copilot is that rare instance of Microsoft nailing the brand. <laughs> you know, it's exactly right. Yes. It's the exact right brand. Uh, it's very descriptive of what it is. It sort of uh, self-explains its capabilities in a way, right? It's mm -hmm. uh, it's not here to do the job for you. It's here to help you do the job. You know, it's smart. Yeah. There's a lot of good developer stuff. Obviously, if you're a developer, mm -hmm. they really they really went. If we want people to really build stuff for Copilot and all this, we've got to make it easier for them. I love the idea of the of the dev environments that you can save mm -hmm. and automatically set up. I love the fact that you can do what we've been able to do in OneDrive and SharePoint for years, which is, hey, I just want a local drive that connects to all this stuff to GitHub right. and brings that up. I ran into Christina Warren. She's mm -hmm. going to do a show, and I would really love to talk to her more about what they see for GitHub and how IT pros could be using GitHub and when GitHub will finally get integrated into Teams. IT pros. Like, well, so first yeah. of all, GitHub should be integrated into Windows, period, full stop, just to be yes. a, part of the base install. Um, I use GitHub for the books that I write. Um, mm -hmm. There are absolutely productivity, non-developer use cases yeah. for GitHub. And um, it sounds obvious, but you know, Microsoft spent many years building you know, file versioning and whatever else into Windows, into OneDrive, et cetera, et cetera. This is the infrastructure that we're, this is, it's proven. This works. Yeah. Um, they need to make it friendlier for sure. GitHub is a little tough <laughs> yeah. um, to use, you know, from a command line or within Visual Studio, whatever. But yes, this is, this, this system works. And uh, yeah, yeah hundreds, this needs to be more broadly uh, yeah. available. Yeah, and now pull out tabs and some of those things. The thing that I really loved, and Richard and I were talking about this, is it is, as Windows has evolved and as somebody who's been involved, directly involved in Windows, you know, control panel, that was great. I got to knew everything is at. Then when they started to slowly bring it into Windows, but not, but yes, it got very right. confusing where to find things. And now it's even harder because yep. month by month, things will disappear. I love the fact that I can say, okay, put everything in dark mode and split up my windows and do this well. I like those ideas. I think being able to say, you know, put it into Batman mode, flash mode or whatever you want. <laughs> nice. You know, I want the dark yeah. night version. And then I want the one yep. that's just got all the windows open and all over the place, et cetera. But to be able to do those sort of things where I can, the well, way you can in a car. Hi, I'm driver number two. Customize my setup in the car for me. To be able to do that as I work on different projects, because I have two different screens and how I set up for video editing or a podcast is very different than how I set it up when I'm presenting. To be able to do that with simply just a few words is really valuable. Uh, and that's a huge yeah. time saver. And that really is customizing Windows. And Not I a think one this size is, fits all. Yeah, this is something technical people probably to shake their heads at. But the truth, you know, we live in a world in which most people don't know that all tab exists. All tab yes. having existed literally since the beginning of Windows. So. The reason we have a taskbar in Windows is so you can see what's running. You, right. they, most people don't know to go to the keyboard. And, of course, we have systems where there aren't keyboards, right? I know we have tablets and everything. But um, but this has been a capability in Windows for a long time. So expecting them to know that copy and paste exists, that uh, you know yeah. themes exist, that dark mode exists, whatever, um, you really can't make that assumption. And um, discoverability is is hard. You know, yeah. it's, uh, I mean, I it's, used to know where dark mode was. Now I have to go to find and type in themes or dark mode, yeah. and then it brings me That's to right. it because it's moved around a few times. And That's I'm right. smarter than the average bear on <laughs> Windows. Yep. And I can't even find it. So being able, that's where I'm excited, some of those sort of things. Bring up the last two PowerPoints I did on this topic or mm -hmm. things along that line. 
the automation and the integration of other apps, I think, is what's going to make this really great. You know, open this with Adobe Sign rather than Adobe Acrobat. Simple things where, you know, hey, how do I change the default for this? Yeah. If I can say change the default app for opening MP4s to this now, and right. Copilot says, great, sure, which one do you want to use? And walks me through that. That's really great. It's sort of like the way Apple Actually, Help used to be years ago, where it would walk you through stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a long time ago. Um, long time ago, but it was great. XP, like, click probably. here and do yeah. this. Yeah, and click here and on. I love that. Actually, that was great. open with is a tough problem in Windows today. Um, it is. Uh, and right, speaking of things people don't know about, right click would fall into that list too. But it's a little ponderous, right? It's. Um, I run into this a lot. I, obviously, when you double click on a, an image file, you just want to look at it for the most part. Right. But there's sometimes you might want to edit it in Paint or edit in Photo, whatever you choose. Doesn't matter, Photoshop. Right. Um, and Making that leap is a little bit difficult, you know? Yeah, right. And now you have the whole new menu, which has a ton of other things. And it's a lot easier to say new Excel yeah. format or copy this Excel spreadsheet and open it up as a new version, V2. Yep. That'd be yep. great. Just simple things. So, and especially if you're working across multiple devices, that I think really is going to become good where you can take that customization. You don't have to start creating you know, batch files or whatever you do, PowerShell scripts to to do that, right. to be able to bring that in. What were your big takeaways from Build? Because you're a little more developer-y than I. <laughs> so. so I'm I'm very much more concerned with the client than I am with the uh, cloud or whatever, yeah. the, the back end. Um, and I, I do have a, a bit of a developer focus. So Build has always been my favorite Microsoft show. The shift to the cloud was tough on me because that was really about the shift away from Windows, and I completely understand why that's not, um, you know, the point anymore. I will say, for some reason, when we go to AI, like in the, like the cloud thing always bothered me. Bothered me. I mean, like as a as someone focused on Windows, that was always a little like, Ugh, you know. But yeah. there was some. I think it was Stevie Batish who said he the the way he said it was, he was talking about. How they want to develop, or maybe it was Panos Panay. One of them said something to the tune of, we want developers to use Windows to create whatever they're creating. And I made the distinction on uh, Windows Weekly because we covered it live that, uh, to be clear, he's not saying we want you to develop for Windows. We want you to develop on Windows. Right. And I have to say, I, I, could, I should have and could have made that connection years ago. But that's a good message for Windows, right? Uh, and for someone like me who like is very concerned about the future of Windows and, and whether it matters anymore, et cetera, et cetera. Windows is you know, a billion users, whatever it is, and we're using, uh, we're doing you know productivity tasks on it every day. But one of those big productivity scenarios is developers. And Microsoft makes a good case for developers for staying on Windows. They put all the work into WSL and Terminal and Visual Studio. Linux which subsystem is cross -platform, and yeah, yeah, all the rest, yeah. Yeah, all that stuff. And it's... It makes Windows relevant to an audience that I actually really care about, and it makes Windows relevant in a way that I think is important. And I, I, honestly, I kind of came away from this build, I almost said in a better mood, <laughs> but with a uh, more positive perspective than I had maybe in years. Because really? I always felt like, yeah, Windows always got, well, for 10 years now, has been kind of pushed to the side, I felt. It has been, yeah. But now there's so a perspective at, at here. At least since Windows 7. Windows 7 was the last front and center yeah. version of Windows. Yeah. And then well, I could see why they were... went, yeah, screw you. We're going to go remake the Mac and do all that. And and then Windows 10, I, I mean, I think I told you the story. I um, God, probably about eight months ago i got mm -hmm. asked to to do a, a speech and i and it was and they kind of did like look you were the windows guy for so long would you kind of talk about the history of windows and where we're going and all that and how just this so people people know I don't, you started on windows 7 when you came i did to Microsoft. Yeah, yeah windows yeah. 7 beta i was That's brought right. in to help launch springboard. windows 7 beta yeah right. springboard and all that yeah. other good stuff yeah so i got in front of this audience and we're chatting and i'm like so what do y'all think of windows 11 and they all said we hate windows 11 and oh, i basically geez. said i say this with all due respect but F you. I said, yeah. you know, when we came out with Windows 7, there was a great cartoon from Penny Arcade, and I still have it to this day. And they're in front of a PC, and they're playing. It's like, what are you doing? Because I'm playing with the Windows 7 beta. What does it do? It's Hitler's head. And when you hit Control Alt Delete, the eyes light up. And he goes, still better than <laughs> Vista. Yeah. I'm right. like, look, we just got compared to Hitler and barely won. Then right. Windows 8 came out, and you're like, we love Windows 7, you know, because it was, we love XP, okay. we hate Windows 7. Then it's this, I'm like, 
Then we got, you know, to Windows 10. <laughs> we love Windows 7. Then we got to Windows 11. We love Windows yep. 10. I'm like, you're always going to love what you have now. I said, sure. Windows Vista got good with the second service pack. Windows sure 8.1 got, got really good usable. with the third service pack, which was uh, Windows 7. But Yeah, <laughs> right, but, exactly. But yeah. you're always going to hate what's different and new. Yeah. And fine, skip a generation, but still. And that's the thing is they're saying for those folks that are not on at least a minimum version of Windows 10, the... I forget which one it is, the two, three, whatever. You're not even going to be able to use the new teams and things like That's that. Right. And Copilot's going to be Windows 11. So I, every, you're going to have right. to go to it whether you want to or not. I was literally just thinking about that during Bill when they were talking about Dev Home and some of the other things like this. Is, well, Copilot, I mean, yeah. <laughs> this is not coming to Windows 10, folks. Um, nope. So if you want to take advantage of this stuff, you have to be on Windows 11. And yeah. look, it's been almost two years. I, I feel like they've addressed and are addressing most of the concerns because there were some functional regressions, especially in the taskbar, right click stuff, whatever. But yeah, um, people are so particular, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I I struggled with um, habit change. I mean, I I I launched Task Manager a particular way for 20 years. Yeah. And they took it away, and I'm I, I'm sort of a Windows expert, I think. But yeah, I had a hard and time with that. In fact, I have to go down to the taskbar and right click mm -hmm. it to get to Task Manager. And I'm like, what? I no no I no I agree. And so. Windows users are older and curmudgeon and don't like to change. Unlike a yes. Mac user who, if we could create a new OS every three years for them, <laughs> they would love it. Hey, fact, everything's the complaints new over there is that think Apple doesn't move quickly enough. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So I, I, I think it's interesting, but I think there's a lot of excitement. I think mm -hmm. Copilot is going to shake up the industry for the better. I think AI, I don't want to say, it, it is absolutely the buzzword right now. I don't think it's going to be this big... I think it's evolution, not revolution. I don't think that's this revolutionary thing. It's, I think it's you know evolution, it but it will force things to happen more quickly and differently, which we could use, and it will benefit. Yeah, the it's it's the uh, it's um, the MSG of uh, computing. It's going to make everything taste better, you know, or be better. Yeah, it's um, it's an ingredient in everything. You know, it is a platform, I guess. You know, whatever. It's the next wave, however you want to call it. But it, it's also it's something that lifts all boats. And I think that's what's most interesting about it. Um, I agree. And in the Microsoft space, whether you're using Windows or Office or Bing or whatever it is, Edge, those things will all be made better by this inclusion. And um, and your jobs will be made easier um, mm -hmm. or better or however you yeah. want to say that. You know, The things you would have to have struggled with and maybe spent hours or days or weeks on can now be done with you, so you done for you so you can move on with what you're – actual job is you know? right i'm also looking forward to finding the time when people just start to do stuff with ai and don't check it and you get ridiculously stupid things sent to you that make absolutely no sense and that's yeah. going to be hi yeah. you automated this and didn't check it you know, know because that... what you asked for is just ridiculous or it makes no sense and you're going to get some of that too where people are going to become too reliant and just send crap out, and it's going to make junk mail harder to figure yeah, out. Yeah, Spamming yeah. is going to get more intelligent. There's going to be some negative aspects with this, True. too, but um, there it always is. Good, there might be a good timing element to this, too, because now post-pandemic, we've kind of moved into this, we're going to call it a hybrid world, but the reality is people can work from home, by and large, are working from home. It's, it's uh, depending on the job and the company, et cetera, you might have to come in some number of days a week or month or whatever, but right. I feel like the the timing for ai is good because you're going to have more time now <laughs> you know and yeah. it, it it make your for the drudgery of having to work from home uh, which is great in some ways and terrible in other ways right um it will at least get you through this stuff that otherwise might have required you to walk down the hall and be like bob how do i format a spreadsheet or how you know right Whatever this stuff, I mean, it can it, it kind of gets you over that hump. Right. Where do I uh, find this? You know, yeah. where are we storing? Yeah. Some of those simple things. Yeah, absolutely. I think it is like you know, Blue Apron. Hi, we'll send you everything you need to make a great meal. We'll give you a picture yeah. of it. We'll tell you exactly how to cook it and how to do it. And if you screw it up, there's no hope for you. But we'll give you yeah, everything yeah, yeah. you need and try right. to. What we're not doing is sending a person to your home this. to make it. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's the only it. thing yeah. we're not doing at that point. Right. Yeah. As long as you follow this, it'll it'll work out okay. And I think this is the first step towards that. And um, I think right. there's a lot of positive. I'm excited. I think it's a great time, and it's nice to see Microsoft out in front on something yes. before everybody else. And that was the conversation is, when was the last time you saw Microsoft in a commanding lead in a new area of technology? Exactly. I to, to a lot of people out in the world, Microsoft either is a non-event or they're the Oldsmobile of computing or whatever you want to call it. And <laughs> uh, it's, yeah. it's it's very interesting. No, I mean, I, I agree, yeah. 
you know? Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good for the company and for people who rely on Microsoft in whatever capacity. It's it's nice to see because uh, I feel like, you know, we, we see, you know, for all the complaints about a dominant Microsoft, we see what it looks like when these other companies are running roughshod over the industry. And it's like, you know, uh, maybe some a company with better ethics and, uh, you know, better con uh, data controls, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and just, you know, just throwing it out there. Um, you know, nobody's perfect, obviously, but um, I trust Microsoft more than I trust uh, Google or Amazon. That's for sure. Agree? Yeah, no, no, I agree. I think, uh, like I said, it was a, it was a good build. Yeah. It, uh, it's generating a lot of conversation, which is what makes me excited. And I've not seen that from folks I've talked to a build in a long time. It's one app, it's one thing. This is really high. Everything's going to change no matter how you're doing this. And you better buckle up because it's going to happen quick. Mm -hmm. uh, it is all AI all the time since January 1st. And it's going to continue to be until we get to a logical place. And I think it'll be interesting to look back at this at Ignite and go, OK, here was sort of the official start line. And here's sort of, you know, our first rest stop and where are we at and how is this looking and how are the runners doing and what mm -hmm. do we see coming up? But I think we need to be diligent about governance and security and how we look at this and where the data is being stored. And we have to hold Microsoft's feet to the fire on that is okay. Yeah, but but I want to understand how to track that's... this stuff and GDPR and all of that sort of stuff, I think is really critical. The problem is uh, the other, any other company doing AI is going to have to figure that out. Microsoft already figured that out, right? So they can apply what they've been doing for enterprises for, like I said, decades to mm -hmm. a NR applying it to AI. And that's, that's, this is a skill other companies are going to have to learn. They're going to make right. mistakes. But that's only if you go through their tools. With ChatGPT, yeah. you don't have all that, and that's going to be the problem. Right. People are going to go, I don't want to pay for it. I'll just do it directly, and that's going to create a lot of stuff. And they'll associate ChatGPT with Microsoft because of the yeah, of investments. Course. So I think that's where things will people think going. Microsoft owns ChatGPT, right? They I mean, do not. They've mm -hmm, just invested yeah. a whole lot of money and given them a right. whole lot of Azure credits to do this, and uh, it'll yeah. be interesting to see how this all comes together. But... As always, Paul, it is always great to see you. Brad, as yeah, always, you. you've taken up the whole conversation. I and have. have not a chance to get a word in. Brad's usually how a little you, chattier. I, uh... <laughs> so uh, how are well, you, Brad? Stephen, how you made my job going? easy. All I had to do yeah. was figure out which buttons to press and pre when to press them. Even that I managed to screw up. And so, soon, I, I and we're working like on an AI script over. for that. So be aware, uh, we may not need you in a few months. We may just use the AI script to do that. So uh, we're Even very bad. sorry. and. And I, and I, for one, welcome our robot over. I listen, so, uh, yeah. that capability and uh, <laughs> animated avatars, uh, Brad and I will just take mornings oh, off God. and a podcast will occur without our involvement. It's perfect. That'll be great. I look forward to hear what you're saying. Uh, I do too. I can't part. wait. I like. I want to be a viewer. Exactly. No, seriously, well, Brad, how are you? I've not had a chance to chat with you or something. I am you. good, Stephen. We are almost out of time on this podcast. I know. But it's, uh, it's been good. It's interesting to hear about how you guys approach AI. I use it every day at work. Um, yeah, there's Actually, a lot Brad of has some great examples. It, Brad, in fact, Brad was kind of instrumental in helping me understand, uh, like, you know, use cases for this, mm -hmm. right? I mean, because you had some really good stories about how I, you I literally use it every day. Um, yeah. Sales emails, like when we're trying to write subject lines, it, you can write right. in there and say, these are the core points. Give us 10 options. Um, right. You can have it rewrite things for you for when you're stumped. Like, these are real basic implementations. But when you're sitting there thinking like, man, how do I write this to this guy? You can just right. take their content, dump it in there and say, give me five examples. And you've unblocked yourself from maybe taking an hour to respond to yeah. an inquiry about a process to 10, 15 minutes. We've all done this, right? My wife and I are both writers, so she's here in, in the home with me. And I'll say, hey, can you come over for a second and just take a look at this? Mm -hmm. And what do you what do you think? Of, yeah. Like, this is important, this thing. How's I'm the tone? With. Right. Yeah, exactly. I want to make sure I'm getting this right, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, that stuff's, it's awesome to have... Um, that kind of capability you know i agree yeah my, my wife works for a non-for-profit orchestra so she'll get like the musicians will send like their bios and they're like this and i go into chat gpt hi turn this into a single paragraph yeah. boom yep. and it's good and everybody it's seems nice. to be pretty happy with it just needs a now, little bit of tweaking at that point the, the trick with ai is that an intelligent person would uh take what ai pumps out and review it mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. make a couple of tweaks right i think the fear with ai is that uh, some portion of the population will go done, yeah. and a lot of and that's what you were saying earlier, actually. Yeah. A lot, a lot, stuff's going to come through an email or however, whatever. And it's, it's like, what the heck is this? Right. And it's, it's like when you get a dear, you know, dear name, 
comma. Right. Yep. You know, all your bases like, hey, belong to nice. us. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You're like, what the? I have no clue. So yeah, it's it's kind of get interesting, but it's uh, but it's good. But it's great to see both of you. I'm excited you that I'm now part of the the Petri family. I'm yeah, excited to be launching my show podcast. in a few weeks. I know you guys will give it a good mm -hmm. plug when it comes in. Um, so we've recorded an episode on the new teams. Yep. We've done an episode on uh, Loop. I have recorded mm -hmm. an interview with Richard and uh, have a bunch more stuff coming up. It'll be 30 minutes, deep oh. dive. We'll look at it from an IT pro standpoint. And yep. uh, I think it'll be great stuff. Well, yeah, we look forward good. to that, Stephen. We thank you for waking up really early. This is yeah, uh, 6 a.m. Yeah, his time. Time so zone is not a strength. Yep. <laughs> no, and I'm old, so yeah. There we go. But, I, but I, there was no better people I would rather get up at five in the morning for than you guys, and I'm happy oh, to do it. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate that. We don't know if it was the AI saying that, but we appreciate it. And we'll catch yeah, everybody right back right here to tomorrow. <laughs> Stephen must go now. <laughs>